Hello and welcome to JavaScript and jQuery best practices. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the best practices that one should adhere to while writing JavaScript and jQuery code. So the first step is always include the script files at the end of the body tag. So you can see that the body tag is ending over here and we have included our script files just at the end of the body tag. This ensures better page load time because if we include scripts in the head section then at the time of page load these scripts will be loaded first and that will add on to the page load time. So to reduce that and to resolve that basically we should include all the scripts files at the end of the body tag. The second thing we should keep note of is that we should always separate our JavaScript code from the HTML. So over here, as you can see, we have created a demo.js file under scripts directory. So we have taken out the JavaScript from HTML and kept it in a separate file. This allows us to maintain it in a better way. Another thing that we should note over here is if you are loading some library, like over here we are loading jQuery. So you should be loading them from a CDN, that is from a content delivery network. Make sure that these files are served from the nearest server possible. So that basically helps in faster page load. Best practices tip number one, always use meaningful variable names. For instance, as you can see in this, we have first name as the variable name. So using the first name automatically implies that it's first name of something. So over here we have assigned skill bakery to the variable first name. We should use camel case notation for writing variable names and each variable name should be preceded by a var keyword. Tip number two, we should always terminate statements with semicolon. Over here as you can see we are terminating it with a semicolon symbol and if we forget to put a semicolon, what happens is JavaScript automatically implies semicolon. So over here, as we can see, if we write it in this fashion, return and then with a line break, first name and terminate it by semicolon, this will be wrong way because return will be automatically terminated by JavaScript by implying a semicolon over here. Tip number four, we should always use triple equal to comparison. Now, if we go for double equal to comparison operator, this always converts to the matching types before comparison, whereas triple equal to operator forces comparison of values and type. Over here, we are just taking a number and initializing it with value 10 and comparing if the number is 10, we are simply writing it as number is 10. Over here we can see that if we are making use of double equal to operator and comparing zero with empty quotes, then we are getting true value. If we are comparing one with one, then also we are getting true, whereas in this case one is an integer and this one is a string. If we are saying one equals true, then also it's coming as true. Whereas if we go with triple equal to, in this case if we run this, we'll get false value because zero is not equal to empty quotes. Similarly over here as well, since this one is integer and this one is a string, we'll get false value. Over here, we'll also get false. We should always close conditions with curly brackets. So over here, if we are writing number 10 and we are getting this condition true and we are writing these two lines, normal case, we will think that these two are part of this condition itself. But actually, JavaScript will only consider the first line and will not and will not treat this as part of the condition. It will be executed anyways. So in order to do that, we should always close the this if condition with curly braces, like as we have shown over here. We should always avoid using eval because it decreases your script's performance. We should always provide comments to our methods. This helps in understanding the code without going through the whole code and also helps in debugging the code. Comments can be provided using single line comments with two forward slash and for multi line comments we can have this forward slash with star mark that is an asterisk and similarly over here ending with 
with asterisk and forward slash. We should always avoid using global variables because that might cause variable conflicts with other libraries. In order to resolve that, we should be making use of namespaces. Making use of namespaces is very simple. We just have to declare a variable by using the keyword var and then the variable name equal to, then curly braces and whatsoever variables that you want to define. You can just go on adding them with the variable name, colon symbol, and then the value. Separate each one by comma, and if it's last one, you don't need to put any comma. Just close the curly braces after that. So this way, you'll be able to create namespaces. Coming on to best practices tip number nine. Always use curly braces instead of going for a new object as shown over here. Similarly, if you have to initialize a string, use empty quotes instead of going for a new string. And similarly, use zero instead of new number, like as shown over here. Use false instead of new boolean, as shown over here. And use square brackets instead of new arrays, as shown over here. And similarly, you can use this expression for regex and use function as we will be seeing this in jQuery. Best practices, tip number 10. We should be making use of shorthand notations wherever possible. So as you can see over here in this code, we have a variable called direction and a variable called distance. Now we are saying that if distance is greater than 100, then the direction should have a value of one. Otherwise it should have a value of minus one. So over here we can simply write this whole code in one line in this fashion, where direction equals distance greater than 100. In that case, if it evaluates to true, then the first number will be assigned to variable direction. In this case, it's 120, so one will be assigned to direction. Otherwise, minus one will be assigned. Tip number 11. Instead of using too many ifs, we should go for switch case statements. As we can see in this function, we are passing age, and if age is not a number, then we are simply saying not an age. Otherwise, age is greater than or equal to 50, then we are writing old. If age is less than or equal to 20, then we are writing adolescent. And if nothing matches, then we are saying young. Coming on to tip number 12, best practices for jQuery. We usually write this kind of syntax when DOM is ready. So over here, this is the usual way of writing. You can notice that function and then a bracket is there and curly braces. So instead of writing new function, we can simply use this way of writing the function. But this is the usual way of writing it. There is a better approach to this, which we will see now. So in this better approach, you can see that we have immediately invoked function expression, which starts with a parenthesis or a bracket you can see, and then function. And inside that we are passing three parameters, the shorthand notation for jQuery, then the window and document object. Inside this, the dollar symbol is locally scoped, and you can see that we have the function which checks that when DOM is ready, it will simply say so in the console. And over here, these three parameters are passed, window.jQuery, window, and document. So the global jQuery object is passed as a parameter in this case. Then we have tip number 14. Whenever we have some elements like this anchor tag, we have skill link as the ID. So when we have to access this, we will be doing something of this sort. Where element is equal to dollar symbol and then hash for ID, if it would have been a class, we would have used dot and then the name of the ID. So skill link. So what we are doing over here is we are caching our selectors in variables. So skill link is now cached in this variable called element. And then we can make use of this element to change few things. So basically we are manipulating the DOM now and we are changing the title attribute of this particular element. So whatsoever is the content of this element, which we can see over here. So this says skill bakery start learning today. This is the text. And this text will then be assigned as title of this element. Tip number 15, we should never mix CSS with jQuery. For instance, jQuery allows us to change CSS or style attributes of a given element over here. If we have an element with ID Ajax response, we can simply change its CSS property color to red by making use of this statement. But we should not do that. Instead, 
of changing the color attribute we should be adding a class as we can see over here you can see that we have a you can see that we have an element div with idhx response and we have also defined the style attribute called class red which changes the font color to red so using this statement we can easily achieve the same result and avoid mixing css with jquery tip number 16 we should be making use of array.join in order to create dynamic lists. For instance, we have a UL over here with ID item list and it's containing five list items. So in order to add more to this list, what we can do is we can simply cache it first of all in a variable or assign it in a variable by this statement that is with their ID and then create one array using square brackets and initialize the variable I from six to less than 100 and then assign all the values to this array after that we can make use of the join function and join the whole list item that are available in this array to this item list we are making use of append method to append the whole list to this join tip number 17 we should always ensure that on whatever element we are trying to perform any operation that element is there or is present in DOM or not to ensure that we can make use of the length property as shown over here. So if we have an element with this IDHX response, as we can see over here. So this will evaluate to true and it will say div exists. Else it will say div not found. This tutorial was brought to you by skillbakery.com.